Hey, good morning everyone. Dennis K here with Belize Islands Real Estate. I'd like to give a big shout out to Robert. Robert, who bought me today's coffee. Thank you so much. You know guys, I've been thinking, I've been on so many Zoom calls with you guys lately, and it's really been an inspiration because as well as, uh, besides me just answering your questions about Belize and how to invest there and where to move to and how to make everything work, I've also been getting a lot of ideas myself. So it's been working both ways. For example, I just posted a video just a little bit ago about two third row lots that we have for sale south of San Pedro town, about five and a half miles south. If you haven't seen that video, please go back and watch that. I think it's entitled something like the southern tip of Amagris Key is still in the path of progress. And I highlight what I would do if I were to purchase these two lots. First of all, I would build my own private home there. So something I could use for Steph and I. But also, if I got both lots, I would consider opening up something that would cater to the hundreds and thousands of tourists that are going to be visiting the south side of Ambergris Key uh, when they stay at La Serene. So you could take advantage of that. Also, for the tourists looking to visit the Marco Gonzalez Mayan site, these lots are located right near there. So there's a, going to be a lot of activity there in the future. So what would I do as a business opportunity? Well, here are some ideas I had. Number one, you could just do a very simple breakfast, right? You can do coffee, pancakes, something like that. Uh, you sort of cater to uh, all the guests staying at La Serene who want to venture out and about. Because here's the thing. With a lot of people coming down to Belize, and this is true no matter where they vacation, oftentimes you have a family coming down and you always have someone in the family who is an early riser, right? So they get up before the sun rises, they start their day, maybe do a little exercise and they go off and have a coffee like I am this morning, right? But maybe the other family members like to sleep in. So oftentimes for that one early riser is their opportunity to get up and do some exploring on their own before they come back later on in the morning and the family gets up and around so imagine you have you know all these people now staying at la serene when it opens up and you have those early riders who like to get out what if you open up a little coffee shop a little breakfast place just a half mile away uh, on one of these lots and you offer some really good quality uh, homemade muffins or biscuits or something like that or do the reverse open up only at night say six to eight at night and your sole thing is pizzas takeaway pizzas maybe you don't even have tables to sit at you just offer uh, takeaway pizzas that are already baked or even better yet take and bakes so maybe you spend the morning making up, say, 20 or 30 pieces, pizzas, you put them in the fridge, and then you just offer, as you drive home uh, back to La Serene, after your day of snorkeling, diving, fishing, whatever you want to do, and you drive past our place, pick up a couple of take and bake pizzas to go, take it back to your uh, condo at La Serene, and then you're ready to go. Now imagine the, how lucrative that would be from a cash flow standpoint. In the morning, you're just open up three hours, maybe seven to 10. At nighttime, you're open up maybe two, two and a half hours. And you just confine your business activity to those hours. And because it's such a simple business model, your overhead is extremely low, all right? So that got me to thinking about something else. What works in Belize is when someone can find a very small niche market and just drives down deep with that and makes that work. For example, what if on one of those third row lots, right on the main road leading to La Serene, you opened up a breakfast place, but the only thing you offered was pancakes. All right, that's it, pancakes. You could do chocolate chip pancakes, raspberry pancakes, blueberry pancakes, buttermilk pancakes, olive oil pancakes, which I had at the SLS Hotel in Miami one time. They are amazing, all right? Just specialize in pancakes. You could do gluten-free pancakes, buckwheat pancakes, whatever. And maybe it's like a build your own pancake place. You know, like when you go into, um, what is those places called where you get the frozen yogurt, uh, like Pinkberry? So you get the frozen yogurt and then you go through the line, you kind of add your own toppings. What if you had to add your own toppings to this like little pancake bar? Maybe call it the pancake bar. Right? So in the morning you offer pancakes, whatever kind of pancakes you want. You can go with one, two or three pancakes and then they go down and they can put their own whipped cream, maple syrup, jams, jellies, uh, honey, whatever they want. And along with the pancakes, you offer just good old, good old coffee, right? Good old Belizean coffee, uh, which is fantastic by the way. So what if you just offered that from the hours of seven to 10 and that's it. Your overhead is extremely low 
because all you have is are your pancake griddles, right? Your batter, your mixes, and your toppings. Uh, so you don't need ovens, you don't need a lot of uh, fancy restaurant equipment. For example, if you're going to offer a full breakfast, you know, like hash browns and eggs and toast, I mean, that takes a good sized kitchen, but if you're just offering pancakes, there you go. And offer the pancakes to go. So come up with uh, so some good way to package these to go so uh, whoever's that early riser can take them back to the family. Imagine the hero that he would be walking in and uh, at 10, 10, 30 after he's done exploring with pancakes for the entire family, uh, customized for each one. Maybe maybe some of the pancakes for little ones has whipped cream with sprinkles on top, or uh, you know, uh, who knows, just do something fun, right? So that was my business idea for today. Another business idea could be a, uh, a traveling hot dog cart. Traveling, a true traveling, not, not a food truck, right? But uh, something that could be pulled behind a golf cart. So maybe you have, um, you come up with this little trailer that you can make on your own. You have a little uh, a warmer. And all you do is pull up to areas at different times of the day where there's a lot of people gathered and you just, you just offer hot dogs. For example, say at Secret Beach. You know, Secret Beach has some fantastic restaurants, cafes, bars. I don't want to take anything away from them. But uh, you know what if what if you just went to somewhere else in the island? Uh, for example, when uh, when the water taxis come in, and you just pull up your little golf cart there, and on the back of it you have hot dogs to go, and it's all you do is serve quality hot dogs uh, with all the toppings. And that's it. And just you know work work one two three hours a day. Have a, a traveling taco truck, traveling burrito truck. Uh, again, not truck, not food truck, but more like a small trailer. Right? Just a small trailer, something you could pull behind your golf cart. That would work pretty good in Belize. Uh, you know, some of the larger construction sites, pull up to a large construction site where you got like 50 guys on a job and offer something to them for lunch or a, a mid afternoon snack or something like that. That is where the business opportunities are because what I see as opportunities in Belize is, is getting in the game with minimal overhead, minimal capital investment, but massive return. You know, for example, right here. One of my favorite places, right? Starbucks. They do zero advertising, and they they probably spent what 15 cents making my coffee today, and I paid four bucks for it. Why do I pay four bucks for a coffee? Well, because I like it, right? It's fantastic. Now they have overhead, right? They have a, a prime spot there that they pay for, but in terms of the machines and what's actually in the store, it's pretty low overhead, and that's why they're so stinking profitable, right? So that's what you guys should do too. Um, and I'll compare that with renting out a, a couple casitas. Let's say your business plan is, I want my own single family home. Let, let's go back to those two lots down south, right? And I'm doing this specifically for you, Brian, because Brian, you've been asking me about investments now for a while, so I hope you're watching this. Brian, what if you guys got both of those lots and uh, you built your single family home on one of them, and then for income, you built two rental cabanas on the other lot, all right? Think about how much you would actually get per night, all right? So you would get, say, what, 125, 150 a night times, you know, uh, nine, 10 nights a month. Do the math on that. What would it take then to advertise, to get the people in, to turn the units, to offer housekeeping, flipping them and everything? What if instead you built, instead of two rental cabanas, you built the coffee shop or the pancake house that I just told you about, or the to-go pizza place? probably the same amount of capital, maybe even a little bit less, but now you have an income stream that you can just fire up and go with. So those are some of my ideas today, guys. Thanks a lot for supporting Steph and I. We, we really appreciate uh, all your support. Uh, all of you who have been buying us coffee, jumping on Zoom calls with us, it's really exciting for us to see you guys making steps to live the dream. So if you have any qu questions, comments, concerns, you wanna uh, jump, get us to uh, jump on a Zoom call with you, hit us up on the link below, buy us a couple Starbucks, we'd be happy to jump on a call and see how we can help you live the dream in Belize. All right, take care, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.